Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Happy uh, 2024. This Tuesday's with Tina, we're going to talk about mandibular uh, infiltrations. Yes, mandibular infiltrations. So as individuals come in and get going, we'll talk about a little bit about that, about, about why do we give this injection? Where do we give it? Um, how do we give it? All the different types of anesthetics we might use for that. So the you know mandibular infiltrations i know it seems kind of like a weird thing but i get questions on it on a regular basis so hello uh everybody up in instagram world happy to see you and facebook friends over here happy to see you guys as well um before i really i want to give people an opportunity to hop in before we talk about mandibular infiltrations the all the who's what's why's and how's of it i uh, want to let you know that it's been a pretty active couple of weeks I'm updating my anesthesia courses and currently am updating some YouTube channels for the podcast that Kim Augustus and I do called uh, RDH Coast to Coast and also doing a Teacher Tina podcast, taking some of these past episodes of Tuesdays with Tina and updating those and putting those on there. So if there's a past episode or if there's a past topic that I've talked about and you're like, you want to know more, please let me know because I'm, I'm going to go through my archives and start putting those up on YouTube to make it easier for everyone to go back and revisit. So, all right. So mandibular infiltrations. Yes, it's kind of a, of a like I said, a weird request, but one I get on a regular basis. So I think one of the reasons why this in, this particular injection comes up is uh, twofold. One is uh, people may not get profound anesthesia with the mandibular block, right? There's something going on with your mandibular block, your technique with the patient's anatomy that you were not successful with your for your profoundness. And then also um, crossover innervation, or you happen to live in a state where you're not allowed to provide block anesthesia. Okay, so somebody just asked, uh, do you know if there are courses where you can actually administer anesthesia to refresh? Great question. I hold those courses. I do, I do. So thank you for asking that question. Do, are there uh, hands-on refresher courses? Yes, I do have those. And if you are a part of my email list, you will get an email about that, or I'm sure I will be publicizing it on social media. Thank you for asking that question. I Sorry, I got sidetracked. So yes, there will be, there are some of those. And in Georgia, as I'm doing certification courses in Georgia, I'm also holding some uh, refresher courses in Georgia and here in Oregon. Okay, so mandibular infiltrations, back to that. Um, sorry, I totally squirreled on you guys. <laughs> um, so that the reasons why we do it is just for, you know, profound anesthesia. And if you're in a state where you can't do mandibular blocks, I apologize that that, that is your life. Um, I'm sure it's very frustrating because multiple injections to, to anesthetize the mandible it is really frustrating. It really is. Um, especially because you can't get the lingual tissue numb if you're only doing buccal infiltrations and doing lingual infiltrations. Nobody likes that. Our patients especially don't. We only have to. We only do that if we absolutely have to. So that would be why. Now, where to inject? That's the the big key. And this is something that I do review in. Uh, like I have some videos on this in my uh, my online courses, but. Really, basically, you want to you want to inject right at the depth of the vestibule, right? So if I pull my lift out, <laughs> you guys, yeah, welcome to my freedom, welcome to my life. <laughs> so if you if you pull the lip out or pull the cheek out, you want to go right into the depth of that, that vestibule. Make sure you stay away from the alveolar process because no patient wants to feel you skittering down along that. Now, as far as where you're positioned, me personally, I, um, if it's the premolar to premolar to premolar, basically corner of the mouth to the corner of the mouth, I'll sit at the 12 o'clock behind my patient and just uh, come straight down and, and infiltrate or do my supraperiosteal in that direction. If it is posterior to the premolars, what I'll do is I'll come and sit at the kind of seven o'clock or basically my my hip to the patient's elbow or shoulder and come in in a in a lateral fashion coming in like this. Okay. If, if I if you see paint on my hands, I've been painting my office. <laughs> I'm moving, I'm moving into a new office, you all. I'm so excited. Okay. So if it is premolar to premolar, just come right over your patient. If it is uh the molar region like you would do a long buckle but instead going down into the vestibule so that's how you would do your how you would do it um now as far as setting up your syringe the type of needle anesthetics that is that is really kind of dealer's choice 
I would prefer when I do any kind of super periosteal, I always prefer to use a short needle. Hi, Facebook. Hello. Thank you for saying hi. And hello, Instagram. Thanks for saying hi. Um, I prefer to use a short needle. Now, when it comes to anesthetic, I will say that um, with that, I am a true believer on articane. Uh, septicane, articane, articane is the generic name, septicane is the trade name. With our mandibular injections, it's wonderful. It really penetrates that thick portable bone very well, especially if you like, if you do like an incisive with it, um, it makes it a lot easier. Yes, and thank you. So just to review, we are talking about mandibular infiltrations. That's the topic that I'm touching on tonight. Absolutely, because you know it, it happens where we have crossover innervation, or you happen to live in a state where you cannot do a mandibular block. So, um, so to reiterate, go to the vestibule. If it's premolar, premolar, go sit 12 o'clock. If it's posterior, sit like you're doing a long buckle. Use a short needle. Use articane, and that is going to give get you set up for success for your mandibular infiltrations. And if you are a visual person, if you're like Tina, you talk too fast, whatever, <laughs> right? Or it's like you didn't like the look of my freedom. <laughs> I don't know. There is there are videos for this in the new courses that I have. I have a man, one on mandibular infiltration that you can review. And I will say that these courses that I've updated, I've tried to I'm trying my hand at closed captioning in my videos. So some of them will have the closed captioning there that is um, like already there. And it was it was a little distracting for me at first because I'm seeing these words come up. So um, as the more I use it, the easier it got. Um, all right, so that was our topic, mandibular infiltrations, and you know, feel free to you know ask questions uh, next week. I'm not sure which topic uh, I will touch on next week, so if you have a request, please let me know. But I will say this: I want to leave you with um, my quote for the week to start off the new year. It's one that I've done previously, but I think that it really speaks for this time of year. And it says, "If you have the courage to begin." you have the ability to succeed. And it's so true, like really the only way you can succeed at doing something is you have to begin, right? You have to begin. So if there is something where you are like, man, I really want to do X, Y, Z, you know, you just have to start it and then you can have the courage and you'll have the ability to complete. All right, so somebody just posed a question. Uh, yeah, absolutely, I'm so glad to be here. You have a question. If someone has heavy calculus on the lower anterior instead of anesthesia, doing IA on both sides, what would I recommend for numbing um, that area? Great question. And you know what? I would say I would do a bilateral incisive injection. Bilateral incisive, boom, boom. And you get premolar to premolar, those lower interiors are nice and numb. And um, then you can also use articane. If you use articane, it's potent enough. Oftentimes you can get that lingual tissue nice and numb. Yeah. Yeah. For lingual of the lower anterior synthesis of nerve, what, uh, only anesthetize the facial. Right. But if you give it, try that. Let me know. If you've tried it with some articane, see, because I, I would be hard pressed that if you're using articane and you're really massaging that anesthetic in, you might get some lingual. Uh, anesthesia along with it. Okay, great question. Appreciate it. It really kind of goes along with today's topic as well. Okay, so your assignments, friends, I, I have assignments for you. I want you to let me know um, if there has been a previous Tuesdays with Tina that you really liked, if you remember it, if you have it saved somewhere, can you let me know so that way I know to download that and put it up onto the Teacher Tina RDH YouTube channel. Okay, because that's I'm trying to get that up to make it easy for you and everyone else like you uh, to make it easy for you all to see this content, to revisit anytime you want. So I need that. And also, uh, what else would you like to see coming your way? Because 2024, it's a new year, and I really enjoy doing these Tuesdays with Tina. I love talking about anesthesia and being here with you all. And it's I want to see what, what else would you like to hear and see? Um, future courses coming up, I've got anesthesia, one that's maxillary techniques only, mandibular techniques only, patient management, all about the patient, how um, you select your anesthetics, managing them. I have a course on medical emergencies coming in. Yep, all a medical emergencies course and a nitrous oxide course. And also um, the uh, uh, looking beyond the teeth, elevating your extra and intraoral exam. Those are all the things that are coming 
onto the uh, learning platform in uh, the next couple of weeks. So uh, it's going to be busy. I'll be in Georgia doing some anesthesia certification courses and um, doing uh, some courses here in Oregon. And I can't, I have to look at my calendar. <laughs> oh, golly, I have to look at my calendar. All right, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. And just so you know, I will still be doing it every Tuesday. It just might change throughout the time of the day because of my obligations to teaching hygiene students or to treating patients that I happen to have on Tuesdays. So uh, enjoy and I wish you all the best shots and go have fun with those mandibular infiltrations. All right. Bye, friends.